brought to you by Allman Auctions, world's leader in antique tractor auctions. Got a couple of extra hours you don't know what to do with? Well, why not stop at Dave Morrison's place outside Port Deposit, Maryland, and let Dave tell you about his tractor. You start it, you run it long enough for the heat gauge to start to move on the heat indicator, and you turn the gasoline off, the kerosene on, and you went on to the field and went to work. Dave's International Harvester, the Farmall Model H, was a tractor born of troubled times. The year was 1942, and the hostilities in Europe and the attack on Pearl Harbor left America with little choice but to pound its plowshares back into swords and to join the fierce and bloody struggle that came to be known as the Second World War. This tractor was built during that time, 1942. We were fighting Japan and Germany both. The material to build machinery was extremely in short supply. Unless, of course, you were making tanks or guns. As far as farm tractors, well, domestic production fell to almost zero. And those few tractors that did get produced had to undergo substantial changes in order to accommodate our nation's drastic, but necessary, domestic wartime shortages. Well. I mentioned this being a wartime tractor. It was not built with a starter. The starter was, would have bolted here. The battery box would have bolted here and here. And it would sit here. There would have been a bar across up here that held the, the headlights. The starter switch would have been bolted here just below the light bar or down here. Now these things weren't on this tractor because of the war effort in 1942. There again, because of the war effort when this tractor was built, the insert bearings in the engine are brass backed by steel rather than Babbitt backed by steel. But the, the U.S. government used the Babbitt for engines for the Army. It has steel wheels, as you can see, with steel spades. There again, during the Second World War, the government took the rubber for the military. Farm machinery companies couldn't get it, so this is, what, this is how it was built. So what if the ride is a little bit bumpy? It rides very hard. Uh, the the uh, spring in the seat is pretty stiff. The cushioning in the seat is just about as solid as you can get. But uh, compared to sitting on a wooden wagon seat, I'm sure it wasn't that bad. And even with steel instead of rubber tires, even without a starter and lights, and even with brass instead of Babbitt, the wartime Farmall Model H's were every bit the same all-around workhorses as were the almost 400,000 other H's built, both before and after the war. It would have been used in uh, a medium-sized farm operation at the time it was new. It, uh, it would have plowed, it would have pulled a disc harrow, it would have been used to pull a corn planter, a corn cultivator, it would have mowed hay, uh, anything on the farm that horses had done previous. Uh, this tractor was built to put the horse out to pasture, so to speak. Dave pulls a wartime plow behind his wartime tractor, an international harvester model also known as the Little Genius. How does Dave know his Little Genius was made during the war? Well, once again, the wartime plows, like wartime tractors, were made a little different. This piece right here, before the Second World War, and through the last part of the war was cast iron. The middle part of the war, this piece was steel, which this one is. So that makes me think the plow and the tractor is about the same age. Funny thing is, although it occasionally pulls a plow now, Dave has lots of evidence to suggest that his Farmall Model H, the one you see here, never actually did much real plowing, or any other kind of work for that matter. There's no play in the steering or in the sh shifting. There's no play in the steering. If you look at the pedals, the tread on the front of the pedals is sharp. There's no side motion in the pedals. And anybody ever had anything to do with these old farm alls know that the pedals wear and the steering wears. This one, uh, I believe, to be very low hours. Very low hours is right. Heh, the original seat still even has its original upholstery. And maybe that's the rarest thing of all about Dave's 42 wartime farm all age. After all, how many other ages do you know of that didn't get literally worked to death? Lucky Tractor, Lucky Dave, and Lucky Us too for the chance to get to know this bright red reminder of how it used to be when the world was at war 
and a humble piece of farm machinery, a simple farm all tractor could and did make a difference.